ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all ages, we're going to do it. We're going to talk about him, the most polarizing figure in Boston sports right now. Heim Bloom, let's talk about him. Do we like him? Do we not? We're going over the good, the bad, the ugly of Heim Bloom's tenure. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts and opinions on Heim Bloom. Before we get into it, make sure to like the video, share the video around, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Uh, go down in the description to find out any of the other videos you might have missed on um, uh, my Too Long for Twitter series. Um, what other call to action things can I do? Um, let's just get right into it then. Uh, actually, comment down below what are your thoughts on Heim Bloom? What are your thoughts on some of the moves? What are your, some of the thoughts of my points I bring up? What are your points that I might have missed? Um, let's just get into it. Uh, this is Cody Shalfu, Tisbury 33 Games, giving you Heim Bloom's tenure. Now, I think Heim Bloom is good at his job. However, that is not without some criticisms that we're going to get into in this video. First, what does Heim Bloom do well? Well, I think that Heim Bloom does a very good job. At, he makes the necessary little moves around his stars to really make a team shine. He inherited a team with Xander Bogart, Raphael Devers, Chris Sale, with Nate Evaldi, with JD Martinez with a lot of these established pieces and for the most part most of the moves that he's made to supplement those players and all the other positions of need uh, they've been really really good uh, to borderline great uh, now let's just look at it some moves like Michael Walker, Kika Hernandez, Hunter Redfro trading for Kyle Schwarber those are all moves that Heim Bloom has made and really helped us, you know, the Red Sox get to 95 wins or wherever the, the win, 90 wins, wherever the win total was, and almost make the World Series just two years ago. Uh, the big gripe on Heim Bloom's resume is the Mookie Betts trade. If you have, if you weren't around during the Mookie Betts trade and you're just jumping on the, the course now and looking at the trade and saying, what the hell? There's a whole lot of factors that go into that trade. One, that trade was basically set in motion before Heim Bloom even got to Boston. That was an ownership decision that they were going to trade Mookie Betts. They were not going to pay Mookie Betts what he wanted. They were not going to pay Mookie Betts $300 million plus that he wanted over however many years he wanted it over. Ownership decided Mookie Betts was not worth that long-term contract, which is a different discussion for a different day. I'm Bloom was tasked to trade Mookie Betts. Instead of trading Mookie Betts for his full potential, he packaged the price in his contract with that. That is why you get the Alex Verdugo, the Jeter down, and the Connor Wong. Alex Verdugo was a young star in the game. I mean, he was someone that everyone was looking at as one of those key players with Dodgers for years to come. What we get for Verdugo now is a, a, an above average bat who is hit or miss defensively. He's had years where he's looked really good out there in right field, left field. He's had years where he kind of looked lost out there. The base path's been a struggle for him, but overall, I think Alex Verdugo is a solid player. And you get a major league controllable, very solid player to put in left field, right field, wherever you put it with. Connor Wong catching depth, a guy that could kind of that borderline. Uh, is he going to be a backup? Could he be a starter? We'll see this year. I mean, as of right now, it's him, Reese McGuire, and Jorge Alfaro uh, battling out between those one and two catcher spots. And I've liked what I've seen from him in his limited time in Boston so far. Um, not going to say he's been lighting the world on fire, but I think that he's someone that, at least for a year or two, you could have behind the dish and, and really and still be a playoff team. You get Jeter Downs, and we all know that, and we'll get into Jeter Downs later. But when he was traded to the Red Sox, he was looked at as one of the top prospects in baseball. I think he was a top 50 prospect in all of baseball, a top two or three prospect in the Dodgers system, which is, has been deep forever. So on paper, that's a, a decent haul. Now, some of the moves and some of the signings he's made, and I, I picked out a few of these moves. Hunter Renfro, really good deal. Got him for team control, able to flip him, gave us a good year. Miguel 
Blaze, who is who is an international free agent, and now he's the fifth ranked guy in the Red Sox system. Just made the top 100 team list by Baseball of America, I believe. And he's a 50 grade guy. John Schreiber, who was a waiver pickup, I kind of put it in here. He was our best bullpen arm, other than Garrett Whitlock, by far last year. Kiki Hernandez playing great center field defense. Without him, we don't have that miracle run in the playoff. Matt Barnes extension. Now that we'll get into a little bit later. Rich Hill was, I think, fine. James Paxton, the question mark there. Rob Wef- Ref Snyder was a bright spot last year. Trevor Story. I think, uh, you know, we can get into that deal a little bit later. Matt Strom was good. And then this year, Matsutaka Yoshida, Henley Jansen, Chris Martin, Jolie Rodriguez. What was our biggest issue from last year was our bullpen. And we just got four, three or four very good bullpen guys to put in that conversation. Uh, Yoshida, a good bat and someone that the Red Sox need was on base skills. He has a lot of on base skills. I'm very excited to see what he, what he does in Boston over the next few years. Adam Duvall just signed today, yesterday, um, as of this recording of this video, which is the 18th of January. Brings elite center field defense, and as I was looking at this roster, I was like, wow, we could really use some home runs. And He has home run potential. He's, hit, he's had years where he's approached 40 home runs in the past. Uh, Yolen Cespedes was an international free agent signing this year. I think he was a 15th ranked guy, and he's a 50 grade guy. So that's in that Mickey Blaze territory. And then you have the Raphael Devers extension. I think saved the offseason from being a complete dud. And that, that's huge. You have a foundation for the Red Sox. That's absolutely stellar. Notable draft picks. Nick York, he's our fourth-ranked prospect. Blaze Jordan, our fifth-ranked, our ninth-ranked prospect. Both 50-grade players. Marcelo Meyer, our first-ranked prospect. Looks like one of the best shortstop prospects in baseball. Top 10 guy in all of baseball. Mikey Romero, 8th ranked, and Roman Anthony, 10th ranked. This is the guys we got in this past draft, both 50 grade players. Most of the top 30 are all Bloom guys, whether they're international free agent signings, either getting traded for them or uh, drafted. And, and that's the big thing is this is what Hein Bloom was brought to Boston to do. Dave Rumbrakowski came in, kind of tore everything up, won a World Series, awesome, great. That's kind of the give and take in that situation. Behind Bloom was here to keep us competitive and build the farm system. And in two of three years he's been, he's been here, being competitive in one of them. Last year, is it, we're going to get into that. 2020, you kind of throw it out the window. But he's rebuilt the farm, farm system. And this year, Red Sox look like they can compete for a wild card spot. Uh, other notable trades, Brandon Workman and Heath Hembree for Nick Bavetta and Connor Siebel. Now, we just traded Connor Siebel. He didn't really pan out the way we wanted him to. But getting Nick Bavetta for those two guys, the way they were pitching at the time and the way they pitched since, easy, easy win. Absolutely a win. Pavetta alone, even if Siebel never pitched an inning, and as soon as he was traded, retired from the game of baseball, Pavetta for those two guys is a huge win no matter they got Adam Adovino and Frank German uh, for a player named, named Raider. Uh, German had a cup of coffee last year, I believe. I think he's on the top 30 prospects list. Um, as well as Adam Adovino was very crucial for the Red Sox two years ago until you know he kind of got ran down being used so much. Then Tenny to the Royals. Now, I know this. people hated this, and this one's still kind of a – might be a wash, and Tenny – was probably better, uh, definitely better than Cordero. I think people saw Franchi Cordero being the piece of that trade. It's really Josh Winkowski that they ended up getting from the Mets, a part of three-team trade. Uh, Winkowski, you know, a team-controlled arm who looked decent last year. Uh, hard to really say, tell there. Aldo Ramirez, who I think was the 19th ranked prospect uh, at the time for a half a year, Carl Schwarber, that really revamped that offense. That was huge. Renfro to Milwaukee from Jackie Bradley, David Hamilton, and Alex Pinellas. I think that was fine. Renfro had a, I think a down year last year. Uh, Christian Vasquez for Emmanuel Valdez and Weiler Abreu. That one wasn't really too well received by fans. And this is where we're going to get into it. And again, let's just finish up some of these moves he made. The Jay Groom trade to get Eric Hosmer for league minimum as well as two prospects I think was a good move, especially we needed first base help at the time. Costas wasn't ready, just had some injuries. And that was a really good move. 
at the time. They let Schwarber walk, Bogarts walk, Martinez, Mar Martin Perez walk, JD Martinez, Eddie Rodriguez, Evaldi, Adavino, uh, Eric Hosmer, and Jeter Downs were released uh, slash DFA'd. You know, that's that's one of the gripes you could have with Heim Bloom, especially um, when it regards to Bogarts, in regards to Schwarber, um, in regards to maybe Eddie and Eve, Evaldi. So here is my my final take. Oh, you have all those moves. You have all of that. Whatever. Here's what I think he makes really good moves for the most part. Most of his moves and most of his logic might not. I get it. We're Boston. We have to spend four million dollars, uh, you know, or four hundred million dollars rather on everybody. I get it. We have the money. We're supposed to be winning now and right now and not tomorrow, but right now and yesterday too. And I get it. You have two pretty poor years on sandwiched in between a really, really, really fun year of Red Sox baseball. Last year's team was riddled with injuries. I mean, I think if you look at that team, the one thing that stands out for me is how much time Kike Hernandez missed. So that means you have to put Jaron Duran in there. Um, how much time Chris, Chris Dale hasn't pitched in three years. I mean, Waka was, did well, and he, he had injuries. James Paxson we hadn't seen. Um, Story was out, and Devers was out at times. JD didn't look the same. This, this is a team that everything that could have gone wrong for this team went wrong for this team. I think this was a playoff team. I truly, maybe that's just me being naive. Maybe that's just being a glass half full kind of guy. Uh, maybe I'm talking myself out, out, you know, off the edge. But I truly believe that that was a playoff team with everything. Even most things went right. I think it's much of a roster we saw, you know, win all those games last year, make a push last year. However, there are criticisms that you could do. And I think the two big criticisms are the trade deadline from this past year and the Xander Bogart situation. Now, how much of that Xander Bogart situation is on him and on the ownership? We'll discuss that next. But you knew that that team wasn't doing it. Like, you knew that team had issues. You knew this team uh, had injuries. And as soon as you, you make a you know two steps forward, you took four steps back, and that was a theme all year, you should have cut your losses there. You should have traded. Instead of doing this buy-sell stuff, even though I don't think they gave up a whole bunch, either you played out with those guys. You don't, you don't, you know, trading Vasquez hurt. Um, getting rid of Plawecki hurt, you know, those two guys were super um, respected in the clubhouse. And actually, you know, I'm on Twitter, Chris Catillo, uh, super good follow. You should follow him on Twitter, big Red Sox beat guy. Kind of said, like, you know, how much those impacted the team it was kind of overblown. But you could probably should have traded Martinez. Probably, if you knew you weren't going to keep Bogarts, and as much as I hurts to say, maybe you should have traded Bogarts for a big package. You should have. You should have sold more at that deadline. And that's a criticism you can have on Bloom. And the Xander Bogart situation. I think that if... Well, look, with all those big contracts, that's more ownership than it is the GM. And I think that the ownership, clearly after what's transpired in the last couple of weeks, they clearly favor Xander Bogarts, or excuse me, Raphael Devers. And in between those two guys, that's the right call. If it's between those, obviously you want to keep both guys, and I think they should have kept both guys. But if you had to pick, it's Raphael Devers 11 times out of 11. The thing that sucks is that for, for spring training contract, that play out the rest of this deal plus 30 at the end instead of the, if I, I truly believe they offer Xander Bogart seven over, 200 over seven, or whatever the number ended up being in spring training, he would have taken it. I get the whole, he's a Scott Boris client. Um, you know, he's a premium shortstop. Xander took a team-friendly deal before as a Boris client. Uh, there's obviously an incentive to go to free agency. As you see, he got his godfather offer uh, from San Diego. And he I think he wanted to stay in Boston if just the money was right. And that's what Mookie wanted. Mookie's like, if the money was right, that's fine. But 
anyway, overall, I think Heim Bloom is good. I think he's good at his job. I think he is making moves to make the Red Sox a competitive team. However, there are some criticisms in that you you have to have both ends of those coins. You cannot just favor one or one of the other sides. I think us as Boston fans, we need rings now. We re- need rings yesterday, um, and I think I think Heim Bloom can be a guy who helps us win a ring. What are your thoughts down down low uh, in the comments sections? Again, share this, like this, um, subscribe to the channel for more. We'll see you next time. Hey, Pat, if you're listening, Pat, talk to me about it. I'm Bloom, my man. All right, we will see you next time here on Tisbury 33 Games. I'm Cody Schaaf. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody.